didn't direct the majority of our discussion and guidance about financial exploitation prevention to a senior audience, let's not exclude family members and loved ones, especially young adults, from the conversation. While they too are vulnerable to becoming a victim, they also can be an invaluable safeguard to an aging parent or grandparent, protecting them from scams and fraud. Joining me is Dr. Linda McKenna Goulin, professor of psychology at Marymount University in Arlington, Virginia. Doctor, what does your work and experience teach us about including young adults and the most vulnerable in our discussions about fraud and scam prevention? Well, thank you for inviting me to talk about this very important topic. I am a professor of psychology and I teach a course every spring called Adulthood and Aging. And last year, I decided to talk to my students about scams and and fraud uh, that uh, are aimed at older adults and older Americans. And I was surprised to learn from my students, my 19, 20 year old students, that they are very aware of these threats to family members. And in fact, they told me very disturbing stories about their grandparents or even their older parents who have been scammed or um, uh, have had money stolen from their bank accounts and they themselves noticed the problem. So it got us to talking about, well, maybe any campaign that we have directed at protecting our older Americans needs to be opened up and these campaigns need to be directed toward all members of families, in particular uh, households where there is multi-generational family members living there. So I started to think about, well, especially in Northern Virginia, right outside of Washington, DC, uh, there were a lot of households that are multi-generational. And a lot of our households here in Northern Virginia are uh, families, uh, Hispanic families, who come from a variety of, of countries in Central and South America. But it's very common for, for uh, uh, young people to be living among the grandparents. In addition, if the grandparents are not comfortable with English or not comfortable with uh, the way banks and U.S. government does business, then they might not understand uh, completely um, the threats. So I recommend, one thing I definitely recommend is any campaigns should be targeted all members of the family, including teenagers or young adults um, who can advocate and who are also, let's say, more facile with technology and can protect or at least be partner up with their older relatives. And as a professor, you have actual firsthand experience of seeing these familial relationships in play, having worked outside of the United States. Tell us about that. Oh, yes. Uh, it's really interesting when we think about how, um, how most of us live in the U.S. We're very private, our households are private. We have uh, you know, we encourage young people to move off on their own, become independent. But in a lot of families, in particular, like I spent the summer in Spain, a lot of families live uh, live amongst each other or close to each other. All members of the family, all age groups live amongst each other. That, Therefore, I think that any messages that are aimed at older family members should also be accessible to the younger family members who can advocate for their older. Mm-hmm.